Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about Uranus and its wonderful moons and also its wonderful unusual rotation on the side. We're going to discuss why this is all important and what it tells us about other planets. Welcome to What The Math. Now, if you watched any of the previous videos about Uranus, you know that it actually has a very unusual spin. It spins on its side. As a matter of fact, if you were to zoom in here and to take a look at the way that it spins uh, compared to other planets, you would notice that it actually is sort of sideways. So here, you can kind of see that it's actually laying on the side. But that's not it. As a matter of fact, its moons are also spinning or orbiting around Uranus um, in the same sort of plane of orbit. In other words, their plane of orbit, if you were to kind of try to visualize it here, and I think we can do this by pressing this button right here, you would see that it's uh, or, uh, the orbits of the moons are also sideways. Now, this is uh, very, very unusual for planets in our solar system. If you were to compare this to, for example, well, really anything else, you would see that nothing else in our solar system has that. So if I were to go to Saturn and zoom in here as well, you would see that in the system of Saturn, things are orbiting relatively uh, normal. Okay, maybe not as normal as you would want it to be, but a lot more flat and a lot more aligned with the plane of the solar system compared to Uranus. And we've known this for a long time, and there were some explanations to why it happened, and I guess most of the explanations revolve around the fact that Uranus probably received a very large collision a um, long, long time ago, when it was just a young um, ice giant. And so we think that because of this collision, it kind of displaced um, some of the mass and created this unusual spin. So in other words, a long time ago, possibly uh, right after the creation of our solar system, Uranus probably collided or was collided by an object that was about the size of our planet Earth. And it probably looked something like this. So here we're going to try to demonstrate this by launching an, an Earth into Uranus and it's going to collide with it um, any second now. And so we think that this happened early on and shifted the, um, the spin of Uranus. But that's not it. That's not actually why we're talking about Uranus today. What we're talking about is a new discovery or I guess a new uh, study and a new proposition that also suggests that because of this collision early on, and you'll see this in a second, this collision didn't just uh, shift Uranus and uh, make it spin sideways, but it also created all of its moons. Now, in this particular situation, it didn't really work as well. I'm going to try this again. I'm actually going to try to recreate this from scratch. And just, to, just so you can see uh, what the scientists um, in this paper proposed. And you can actually check out the paper in the uh, description below. And so this is what they proposed. They proposed that this collision basically created uh, the moons of Uranus. As a matter of fact, you see that just from a single collision just now, I was already able to create a few fragments here that we can now select and turn all of them into actual bodies, making them uh, legitimate moons of Uranus. So uh, these scientists actually used several simulations and used a lot of analysis and uh, mathematical analysis specifically to try to see if this was actually what happened. And they realized that it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense that the only way for Uranus to actually have moons um, basically orbit in the same sort of unusual direction that it spins around the sun is for it to actually have created those moons early on uh, when, the, um, when the rotation was changed. And the rotation was changed because of the collision and so it's very likely that the moons were also produced by the collision. Let's try this again. Let's see if we can actually maybe even create at least 20 moons just like it has in reality and uh, see if we can produce something very similar. Now, the only difference between um, 
real Uranus and the Uranus in the paper is that according to them, um, the collision would have actually, well, as you can see, it definitely changed the spin right away. The collision produced moons that were uh, orbiting a lot closer than they are in reality. So it's possible that uh, the moons were actually moving a little bit closer and then got kind of moved to the outskirts or maybe there were just a lot more and then some of them kind of collided back with Uranus and some of them moved much closer. So this collision was actually a little bit faster and did create a lot more fragments, but a lot of these fragments actually flew away, unfortunately. Uh, but as you can see, if I were to do this several times, at some point I would actually create a situation where these fragments would most likely stay in orbit. Now I want to see if I can actually do it. I really want to try to recreate this paper and just to see if it actually works. And right here, the collision is at a, a speed of about 28 kilometers per second, created a lot of fragments, as you can see. And if I were to basically select all of them and turn them into actual bodies, let's see how many of them actually assume the orbital position. So um, the only difference between the first collision that we had and this one is that this one was about double the speed, 28 kilometers per second. And here, it was a lot more violent as well. And from what I see from orbits, um, oh, okay, there's at least maybe one or two that might actually have created a moon. So this is a lot, a lot more realistic to what I actually wanted to create now. And this takes me to my next point. And my next point is this. Because of this study, we can now kind of even extend this further and potentially suggest that every single gas giant in our solar system and possibly even every single planetary body actually had its moons created through a collision as well. And let me just talk about this briefly using other planetary bodies. Oh, look at that. I think I actually did create a bunch of uh, moons orbiting right here. Although they seem to be falling again. Anyway, we got close enough. This is close enough. I'm pretty happy with my, uh, with my progress. So let's go back to the solar system. And basically, they can look at the planets that have moons and the ones that don't. And, and so here, we've just talked about Uranus, but we also know that Neptune also received a collision. And it also seems to have um, moons that are orbiting in a very similar fashion to Uranus that also seem to have a relatively similar plane uh, of orbit to its rotation. Same goes for Saturn and Jupiter. We know for a fact that Saturn received collisions early on, and so did Jupiter. So here, the majority of regular moons also move in the same uh, direction and same sort of plane of orbit as the rotation of the planet. And uh, if you were to look at Jupiter, same situation happens there as well. So let's go to Jupiter, and you'll realize that the same thing happens here as well. Okay, well, that's very interesting. So. How about our own planet Earth? Well, we know for a fact, uh, again, based on studies and based on analysis of different samples um, from our planet and from the moon, that the moon of Earth was also created from a collision. They also were made from the same sort of uh, body. And interestingly, where Earth rotates, the axis of rotation of Earth is also aligned, more or less aligned, with the orbital parameters of the moon. So yet again, this seems to apply to our own planet as well. So were all of the moons actually created from these collisions uh, with large planetary bodies in the early solar system? Well, right now it looks like it's very, very possible because we know Venus didn't seem to receive a collision. And look at Venus, it has nothing. We know that Mercury only received very small collisions, nothing major. And once again, Mercury seems to also have no major moon. The only other planet that uh, is kind of in question here is Mars. And Mars does have two small moons, but these were captured from the asteroid belt. It does, however, uh, have shape and indications of a collision that came right here from the top. So it's possible that Mars did receive a collision and possibly had moons and possibly even had several moons that were then somehow lost in the process. Uh, so Mars seems to be a kind of an exception to this unusual rule. But with everything else in our solar system, it seems that 
there's a suggestion at least that um, the moons around the planets and even other objects in our solar system were all kind of sort of created from a major collision that uh, these planets experienced early on in the creation of the solar system. And this kind of makes sense because we know that early um, solar system was very, very, very violent. So it was a very violent place to live in. Anyway, well, that's really it. And let's see if we can maybe finally try this again and create um, another moon for our planet Earth. And that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Now let's see if this actually creates any more moons for our planet Earth. And it looks like maybe not so much. But also don't forget that um, when the collisions do occur, they're not as simple as they are represented in Universe Sandbox. They do create a very large dust cloud from which usually the moons are created later on. So in that sense, it totally makes a lot of sense. Anyway, space out, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.